So I know there's been a lot of videos about N8N and there's a lot more coming. But again, it's this bigger mindset I want to focus on in this one. And I'm going to use N8N to do this, but just keep an eye on the fact that we're putting business logic into N8N and not coding. So whether it's N8N or action pieces or something else, what I really want to focus on is how much business logic is here and how much that has saved me in code and complexity in many ways. Now, I've built this exact same scenario four times for four different customers as we build this product. And we are using PHP and we are building libraries and we are sharing things. But as you grow a product or as you build something, you sometimes learn what is really needed. So you're always changing. It's just how this industry is. But eventually you figure it out and that becomes the particular feature and you know it and you build it and it's not done. It's more ready to be the final thing. So in this case, I just want to show you this particular feature that I just rebuilt today because I need to for the latest customer. And then I'm going to move all the customers over to this because it gives us that final moment where we're doing everything they're going to need but we're now we're doing it in N8N, so it's easier to maintain, easier to re-execute, easier to deploy and share among the customers, easier to come in and support, which is key. There's nothing new here. Not all these things are AI. And N8N isn't, without AI, not worth it. It's actually amazing. The AI just is a big deal with the things I build lately because sometimes I just need it. I'm going to do another one on wrapping an API in N8N so that all the business logic is there and there's no AI. In this case, there's a little bit because we have to extract data from a PDF coming in with lab results and we need the particular results and they come from different vendors. So we never really know for that particular client who's the vendor, who's sending it, what's their format. And even if we did, you're still taking a PDF and you're like OCRing it or pulling the data out. And then you'd have to do a lot of text manipulation, which whatever, it's doable, but I know I'd rather not. Now, the next big question in all of these, and if you take the training, you'll see how it's still a big question, but it might even get less of a question more obvious in time is, why not use Cursor? Why not take Cursor AI, write this as a PHP library, because that's what this project is. Why not then just composer that up, package it up, and ship it to all these five or six customers using this? And right now, it just can't. It doesn't consistently build something this complex, in my opinion, without a lot of work. And I'm not sure I want to start shipping packages to our customers because then we have to maintain them, keep them up to date, add something, fix a bug, and someone has to dive into that and support it. Cursor AI is going to be a funny moment when it just can do all this. So you have to choose between no code, things like N8N or Cursor. But also, we do get the execution history, which I can't say enough about. This interface, as a team, can in, in with multiple customers, you can support, and you can get in there and, and see what's going on, what happened, and rerun those things. It's just fabulous. Another question a lot of people ask is, does it scale? And the bottom line is yes, but... Like a lot of times for me, all my customers aren't these big shops or big places or enterprise. They're a small company with a number of workers who need something done automated. They're five or eight or 10 requests a day is a big change for their office. So I don't need to always worry about scaling as much as solving their problem in a way that is a solid, consistent, supportable, and affordable. If I can build this for them in so much less time, they're the winner. Now, again, back to us as developers. Sure, I'm not going to be charging as much. I'm not going to be uh, having as many hours. But then I'll be doing more things. And, and I talk about this in the training as well. Like We have to branch out. And also see ourselves not as developers, but product owner, driving the product owner's vision so we can help keep our hands on the wheel with this technology so we can help them see their vision happen. During this whole process, what you see here took a couple hours. And some of it is because I'm still new to N8N, but some of it is just, it just takes time. And you run 10 nodes in and you want to just run that one and it doesn't always do it. I don't know why. So I have to re-upload the form. So just don't get frustrated. Just realize this stuff happens. So we have an input. The labs send these results via email. 
Now, with any customer, we make email boxes for them and they can use filters in their email to send stuff there quite easily. Or they could give our email to the lab and it would send the lab results there. So once it hits the email box, it would do all this. Now I'm doing a form just so I could run this test and, and just go through it. And so now when this form comes in, what is that form? So what is coming in? Let's just go look really quick. I made a dummy file, but it will work for um, their needs. But basically these lab results come in, they have information about the water. Um, if they are certain levels, we have to do things and it's linked to a customer. And so we parse this. So we basically need to take that particular data and extract it and then put it into the system. Now the system has a, a form that the user would have to go in and enter all this data manually, but we don't want them to. So when this comes in, we're going to parse the data and then fill in the database for them. So here's this, and I use the extract from file. So this is built in. If the PDF was not so OCRable, I might try to do something different for them. Actually, let me run this really quick because I want you to see some data. One moment. Here we go. And so it does a good enough job of pulling that data out. Now, if it didn't, I have another video where I show you how you can turn the PDF into a PNG page by page and pass it to the Vision API of OpenAI, which I wonder if you could pass it as a PDF. Let it see and pull out the data with more robustness than, than just OCR. But in this case, this example one's working with OCR. Maybe when I get the real one from that lab, I'll run it again and, and see how it goes. I also save it to uh, S3 bucket. It's DigitalOcean Spaces. This is for later on so they can see them in the UI there. Now, when we get this data, we need to do something with it. So I need to produce structured output that I can save in the database. So I use the schema type defined below with the particular schema pattern that OpenAI has or someone has. And you can read about this here and here. Again, lots of good docs, lots of things to read. And so I just pull out the data from that particular PDF. I could have done this in code. I probably have done this in code, but it's just why? Why bother? And then the AI agent says, I'm going to parse it out for you and do something. I'm going to pass it on to the next one. Now, we could have errors here because structured data isn't always 100%. I'm using OpenAI Turbo, which helps. Four and above seems to do better with structured data. And I also have this little setting here that if I have an issue, I send it to an error workflow, which will notify me and, and others to let us know we had an error in the workflow. And so that's there and that helps. Now, once we extract that data out, we want to just save it to the database. So the next one is just a good example of easy is to integrate with Postgres to do a query that I need to do based on the customer ID and get their information. Now you could deal with all the edge cases. I'd like to build happy path first and then come in later and deal with, oh, the, we couldn't find a related registration form. And you can do things like you can always set this to always output data. And then in doing that, you can send an email to staff and say, hey, something didn't go right here. Now, once we get that registration form, and over here I want to point out something, you'll see at this moment I'm doing two things at once. So you don't always have to wait for something to be done. You could run things in parallel. And with that said, over here, I'm going to go save it as lab results. And it's doing that. I'm also going to go get the settings table and every site has a settings table to establish some of that particular customer's settings. And then if it's over the limits that they have in settings, we then do different things. Again, it doesn't care that it's doing this, it's also doing this. And at this point, if it's over the limit, we update. And so this is back to the business logic point. We update the registration form that something's going on here. This actually should be saying it's over the limit. I'll go look that one up after. We set the status. So a lot of business logic, a lot of things triggering. You could even trigger more events from this. Event-driven systems are, are great. They, they can be sometimes hard to troubleshoot. Using Superbase, it can trigger events. I have to figure out how to do this, which is Postgres regular. I'll look that up later or ChatGPT. But in this case, it triggers the next status change. Now, I'm just going to go say, okay, if this is over the limit, let's go notify the owners. 
and we just send an email to the owners of the registration form. Now, all that was like my email, but you could grab the email from the database, which is actually in their related registration form. And all that email is doing is sending its messages out to MailTrap. That's a lot of code in a lot of classes and a lot of everything. We just did it here in under two hours. I think it could even have been quicker. I think some of my delay in, in time, maybe down to an hour, was just messing around with some things. Lack of experience with N8N. And N8N has some quirks. Sometimes it it didn't run the particular thing in front of it. It kept saying, hey, you don't have data before this, so run the one before. I'm like, I already ran it. It even has a pinned data. So sometimes it is its own quirks. But that's it. You see a lot going on here, a lot of business logic. If you imagine each one of these blocks as like classes or code, it would just grow and grow. And it's just more stuff to support. Not the most fancy workflow ever, but it gives you a sense of what can be saved, what can be done how to get business logic into any den and let it do a lot more of the work remember there is a training you'll see a link in the description below share the videos with others and subscribe if you're not subscribed but more importantly share in, in comment because there's a lot of good comments here and there that remind me to not just assume something so it's great to hear what people what they're thinking so yeah leave a comment all right thank you